let's get started. So exploratory online seminar number 45, uh, cohort analysis part four, finding what makes charm with survival model. Survival model is uh, it, it's basically the prediction model. And throughout this um, series, like we cover uh, layer cake to understand what is the net churn rate, how that is you know, being accumulated, what's the trend over the last 12 months or whatever. And then in the seminar two, at the part two, we introduce a survival curve. And that survival curve is something that like it's gonna, are we gonna use today as part of this survival model. And in the last seminar, we talked about LTV or customer uh, CLV, customer lifetime value. <clears throat> So I think something unique about uh, you know this series is sort of like uh, uh, why we need a co uh, we, we do the cohort analysis because uh, for the type of the business is like a subscription business or we call it uh, especially in the software area like a so a software as a service business uh, it's really important to uh, do use this cohort analysis and then there are a bunch of way to um, employ this technique. So like that's, uh, this is the fourth session, we're gonna bring in the prediction model and then let's see like what we can actually do to understand uh, underlying pattern <clears throat> uh, to improve the business. So uh, that, these are the items I like to cover today. Uh, I'd like to introduce two prediction model or survival models called Cox regression and a random survival model. Okay, and then so like I said, uh, this, this whole press uh, the sort of theme is because this software as a service or SaaS, or it doesn't have to be software; is uh, just a subscription business, have sort of some kind of like unique characteristics compared to a transactional business like the grocery business, so like you go to the some store and buy something uh, kind of business. Right. So uh, because sales business is uh, all about kind of continuation, so the like, longer the customer uh, retain, the more money you can make. Right. So it's, it, the revenue usually accumulates over time. So non-subscription business, you uh, you get hundred dollars from the customers and then, in, you know, uh, simple case, you don't see that transaction for like next 12 months or something like that. So it's easy to sort of like estimate how much you can spend to acquire the customers as long as you don't uh, go over uh, the revenue you can expect from the customer, then you can make the profit. But with the subscription model business is that like you collect the sort of like monthly or like yearly or uh, whatever that could be, but the initial payment is tend to be small. But um, so it's hard to estimate like how much you can uh, spend to acquire the customer. And of course, like you don't want to, um, you know, spend as much as you, um, you would have done for a transaction business in, the case, in, the, in that case, $80, then you lose money. But however, it's not, I mean, like as long as customer retain, like for example, 12 months, and they ended up like spending $120, uh, dollars, then you spend eighty dollars to acquire the customer. Therefore, like you still make a profit, right? So, it's really important that uh, the longer your customer retain, then the more profit uh, you can make, and also that means you can actually spend that profit to improve. Um, your business and the product and service and so on. Um, <clears throat> And then, so that means basically if the customers hasn't churned and if you keep getting the new customers, then that means your revenue accumulate, right? But in most business, you lose customers. I mean, after two or three months later, this is the chart we have seen, I think the part one, like a layer cake uh, seminar, but each color is representing that each cohort or the segment of the customer depend on which months they uh, converted. For example, nine months ago or eight months ago or seven months ago and so on. So typically customer churn, so therefore each cohort, uh, a revenue from each cohort tend to shrink right and then therefore like you keep getting the new customers and then like you have the business growth however <clears throat> on so that was the left hand side but however if your customers don't churn it's like an amazing miracle service then every single new customer will be the new revenue or new growth in this case right so the um, acceleration of the growth makes a huge difference 
whether you have more churn or less churn. So it's important to have the new customers or new conversion, but also uh, for this subscription type of the business, it's actually really important to um, keep the customers as long as possible. Um, <clears throat> right. So the understanding that customer churn or retention, churn and retention are the two sides of the one on the same coin, right? So it's critically important for any such business. So therefore, you want to ask this question. Like, so then what makes my customer churn, right? Um, but before answering that question, so let's realize this customer churn is a bit tricky idea as compared to customer conversion. So let's talk, uh, let's talk about the conversions. Uh, let's take a look at the conversion. So what is the probability of customer conversion for our business? Then it's actually kind of simple because when you have a lead customer, let's say like 10 lead customers, and out of which six of them converted. So that means 60%. So then like we can say, okay, so our conversion rate is 60%. Right, so like this is like a bar chart I uh, colored, and the y-axis is 100 <clears> percent. <throat> okay, so now 60 percent of the customer, like we, uh, you know, we have sort of as a conversion rate. Then same question, we just switch to churn, right? So what is the probability of customer churn for our business? And all of a sudden, this becomes a little tricky because. The longer the customer's lifetimes are, the higher the probability of the charm would be. So that's what we saw with the survival curve in a part two of this series. Right? So like the x-axis is how many months that uh, goes by for you know the customers. So like some for some customers already been using three months, some customers using already four months and six months and so on. And the y axis is a survival rate or retention rate. So the way you can understand is, for example, um, here, let's say that if we focus on the second month, it says 48 percent. So that means for the customers, chance of the for the uh, customers retain through the second month is 48 percent or 48 percent of the customers uh, remain after the two uh, second months so so this uh, survival curve gives you that idea like you know like what's the survival rate or retention rate uh, through that time period so for the details of um, I have done this online seminar number 43, uh, cohort analysis part two, uh, retention and charm uh, with survival curve seminar. So like, uh, you might want to take a look at it for the detail. Uh, you can access to that. Uh, you can find the seminar from our website and under the learn and go into the online seminar. Okay, so going back to uh, the survival curve. So this is this number is a 60%, 48%, 40% 40 is a retention rate or remaining rate, right? How many customers remain like after that uh, period? But when you look at from the Jetta side, then uh, so, so basically 100% minus that retention rate or survival rate is the churn rate. So like what, how many parts up Churn rate, or maybe like a cancel uh, percent, right? So, like, uh, how many percent of the customers left by that time, by the second month, by the end of the third month, and so on? <clears throat> so that's why that this whole churn rate thing is like it becomes bigger and bigger as the months goes by or as years go by, and which is very natural, right? As long as you, uh, you know, it's in any typical business, and we are looking at this is like a customer churn, not the revenue churn. Okay, so now let's think about that another question here. So like what makes customer uh, convert, right? So now like we're not talking about the uh, probability thing. So we, we just want to know like what makes customer convert. And let's say that like, you have the hypothesis, like Mac users might convert more than Windows users. So, you know, like we want to evaluate that. If that's actually true, like you have that feeling, a gut feeling, and then, okay, let's bring that data. And then let's compare those two groups. So like Mac users and Windows users. And what's the percentage of the converted customers um, uh, between those two groups? And it turned out like Mac, uh, the 60% of the customers converted. 
and and the windows only 40 percent so from this we can say hey it looks like uh, os actually matters like what os operating systems they use matters um so it looks like we um might want to look into like windows customers you know what is going on right it's a very simple world um here and then but if the question is what makes customer charm and then that becomes tricky because you think, um, you know, we, without all the knowledge of this whole cohort analysis series, or if you didn't even know the survival cup, then you'd think, okay, let's bring that same uh, bar chart or stack bar chart and compare what the churn rate. But, uh, but uh, obviously, like you have already known that the churn rate itself it, uh, differs or shrink, right? Like as the time goes by. So it really depends on okay, which period are we talking about? Okay, we're we talking about the third month, end of the third month, or end of the six months, and the things can be different. So instead of comparing the two numbers, in this case, the average churn rate, if there's such thing, why don't we compare the two survival curves? It's not like two numbers, just a, we use the curves and then see if there's uh, if any difference. So let's say like Mac and Windows make those uh, curve on the line different. So for example, here we have two survival curves, one for Mac, the blue color, and then Windows is the orange color. And then, you know, like we have already seen um, in the past seminar that you can actually show the confidence in total. So even though like you, even if like you see the difference between those two lines, but depend on like how many customers are actually in that data or in that particular period, um, you know, how much we can uh, rely on that number is different, right? So that's why like, we have this confidence in total. Then the, the way you use it is as long as it's not wrapping on or over, overlapping on each other, then that period that looks like the difference is more significant than the other period where the two lines or the confidence interval uh, with uh, wrap, overlapping each other. <clears throat> so in this case, like it looks like the first four months, the MAC, which is blue color, is uh, uh, above the orange, which means that because y-axis is survival rate or retention rate so looks like mac users tend to uh, retain uh, more than the windows users or you know other way so windows user the orange tend to charm uh, more than the mac users would right so Okay, so, but after that period, those two becomes almost like the same, um, right? So not much difference, but uh, we can say like at least like the first four months, like there's something, uh, some difference there. <clears throat> so that means then like when we want to understand like what makes the customer churn, then what all we need to do is bring in this survival curve, right? And then the steeper the survival curve is, um, indicates the more chance of the churning so in this case okay looks like always what when, when somebody said like hey what makes our customer charm then you can say hey looks like operating system the what kind of operating systems they use actually play some role in terms of like um, you know um, customer charm right then now that means we can actually use a survival curve and then try out like every single sort of potential uh, variable or uh, attributes and then see like if there's any, any difference between the, uh, the curves, right? Um, but there's a better way. You can actually build the survival models that I'm going to introduce today, the Cox irrigation model or survival forest to see which variables have more influence on the slope of the curve instead of like looking at one by one. You can just bring in all the variable and see like you know where you know which variables actually uh, make a difference or which variable don't make any difference right so that's what the, uh, i like to do and then so today um before going through i i gotta confess so we i'm not gonna go into the detail of the cox regression model and the survival forest uh, random survival forest detail like how that you know uh, algorithm works kind of stuff it's actually very complicated um 
and then we i have tried like many times explaining it uh but it's um it's almost like impossible to explain in like 10 20 minutes so i'm gonna uh, flip around like i'm gonna just do it first and then try to understand like how you can interpret the result that you get from those models okay so from here i'm gonna use a, a sort of demo uh session here and the like last time uh, in this series i've created uh, i updated uh, uploaded de uh, sample data in our data catalog so i go to the data catalog and then uh, search as a cohort and then this time this one the sample data for cohort analysis survival model and i'm going to just click on the import button and then uh, just click on the save and I'm going to just make the name, it's a little shorter, as Cohort Analysis Survival Model. And then <clears throat> that data is imported. So it's, it's very simple data, that's 1,294 rows. And this data is each row represents each user. Okay. And then when they, they uh, you know, first time uh, sort of convert it, which is a start time, and when they uh, cancel, if it's true, and like this kind of indicate that customer cancel or not. And the end time is sort of like the last time they uh, sort of like well, pay. So like, for example, as long as we know uh, this customer is still there, and then like this is the last time like we uh, confirm that customers, you know, I, I made a payment or something like that. Okay, so this is a customer period. And then this is a, a customer's event status, which is cancel true or false. And then the operating system, which operating systems they use and which country they are located. And the most important thing to this time is this, these six columns or so six variables. So these are the variables that actually represent the, the product feature or the service feature. Think of it more like a, so, uh, Facebook kind of service, right? So like let's say, let's pretend that we provide Facebook service or something, okay. And then this is like a first month, which feature that customer actually use. Or, um, and then based on that, like we score like a zero and one. There's only actually zero and one. There is no 0 0.5 or anything like that. Only zero and one. One means they use this feature and then zero means they didn't use the feature. But this is not like, for example, nine months uh, customers, it's not like they have used once in the nine months period, no. Is this the first month, uh, it's very, very limited. And then we wanna see uh, what they do in the first month will have any impact on the sort of like survival curve, right? So that's what we want to know. Okay, so then, Quick sort of like a refresher is that like, okay, like I want to see like, for example, this ad birthday, and then will that have any impact? Does this have any impact on the survival curve? And let's take a look. So I go to the analytics uh, view. I'm going to hide the left-hand side. And then uh, we have done creating survival curve before. So like I'm going to select the survival curve. And this is not the survival model or prediction model I was talking about. This is purely just uh, the, I'm going to use a survival curve internally it is using kaplan meyer uh, algorithm to it's really aggregating that data by uh, the, uh, in the survival period or this duration of the customer lifetime and the event status uh, cancel and then if i click on run button at this point what we are looking at here is the whole the whole customer like 1294 customer based on that we see sort of a trend of the survival rate or retention rate Okay, so for example, this is five, and we are seeing 29.9%, um, that means 30% of the customers remain after the five months in. Okay, so now from here, we want to understand if that add birthday feature, if they use that product feature, will that help the survival rate goes up or survival rate goes down? So that's what we want to know. So color in the color, like I'm gonna assign add to birthday. And then automatically it uh, changed to the, this categorical because it's a numerical variable. So I'm, I don't I have to, uh, because this is equal with this meaning, like, you know, zero to one, and it will create zero to 0 0.2, 0 to 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 or something like that. Like we don't need that because we have only zero and one. This will be useful when you have like a, you know, monthly salary kind of, you know, uh, numerical data. But anyway, so I'm going to change that to just as a number, just a raw number and then click on RAM button. 
And then here, and the blue color is zero, orange color is one. So what that means, so orange color is the users who use that feature. And look at this orange color because compared to the blue, looks like a survival rate down. So the curve is uh, much um, kind of steeper, um, you know, dropping. So that means if the customer who use this, uh, who use this feature, tend to charm much more than the customers who didn't use that feature. So this is not really good product feature. If I click on the uh, confidence interval, um, looks like there's a difference, but the problem is it's almost like all throughout all the uh, whole, most of the period that the confidence interval is overlapping. So this it indicates that this product feature is not helping. It's actually uh, it's actually helping customer charm, but we are not sure that difference is significant or not at this point, right? Um, Okay, so we could uh, continue to uh, investigate for all these uh, other variables, right? However, like I said in the slide, we can actually build a prediction model to answer this question for all the variables in once at once. Okay, so I'm going to click on plus button, create a new analytics, and then this time I'm going to select the Cox regression and then start and end. So up to this point, it's exact the same as I did for uh, creating survival model. The only difference here is I'm, I can select the predictor variables. So this is the, actually the cohort in a way, but this time, not just one by one, I can select all of them from add bus data to create activity log and I click okay and then run. And what happened is behind the scene, it creates the survival model, which is a prediction model. <clears throat> okay, and that's result, that's what we are looking at here. So let's start with this importance tab. What we are looking at here is like the importance of each variable in terms of the predicting the survival rate uh, for, for, the, for these customers. Or Another way to say is basically the sort of like a power or influential power of each variable on that survival curve. Survival curve goes up or goes down. We don't know goes up or down, but it looks like, for example, clear activity law compared to other variables has a huge sort of like influential power on that curve. And it might help churn, it might not help churn, we don't know, but we for sure clear activity log, receive friend request, timeline post like that. These are the features that um, have some influence on the survival cup. Now at birthday and limit audience start chart, these three seems like a lot less. And also it's this a great color. And that means it's actually p-value greater than 0 0.05. This means that um, <clears throat> those variables are not significant, even though like we saw with this chart, it might make the difference, but it doesn't have enough data to support that difference is um, significant or meaningful that like, you wanna keep continuing, uh, you keep exploring. Okay, so that this chart gives me, okay, maybe these are three areas, three variables that like, we should look uh, further. And when you go to the survival curve here, I'm gonna adjust number of the columns for the chart, okay. And then this one, the color palette is slightly different, uh, but what it's showing is basically the same thing as this one, except for each variable. Okay, so here the clear, uh, uh, clear, uh, clear activity log, and then this color, this darker blue is one, and then lighter blue is zero. And then that means any users, uh, not any users, but the customers use this feature tend to charm more, right? So the survival curve goes down, the retention rate goes down. So kind of makes sense because if you clear your activity log, that's like a for sure indication of like you're churning, right? So in a way it's kind of uh, makes sense. And let's look at here, like receive friend requests. Uh, this is like somebody ask you to be friend. And then, so if you receive those, then that's one. And if you did them, that's zero. That again, it's kind of uh, obvious because you know what kind of uh, people who don't never received friendly guests want to continue using the 
uh, service like a social network, right? So, um, but anyway, <clears throat> So this one is if you have used this feature or you receive the friend request and they tend to stay um, higher, uh, higher chance of the staying compared to the users who didn't uh, receive the request. So you can see those, um, by looking at this survival curve, uh, look, looks like these three, like a clear activity row, receive friend request, and timeline post like have some influence on the survival curve. And also at the birthday, this chart, we know that um, it looks like this one has some influence. However, when you go to the important step, and it doesn't say that that might be but it's not significant. And probably uh, there are many uh, you know, different reasons, uh, could be different reasons, but for example, um, like we saw here, given the uh, sort of this um, confidence interval is so big, uh, so I mean, like, why? Probably not many people actually use this feature in the first place. So therefore, we don't know those, like let's say only three people use or something like that, then we don't know uh, that even though um, their churn rate is higher, but I'm not sure. We are not sure that's because you know adverse day uh, was used. Okay, and then here it's almost like no difference. These limit audience and start chart is almost making it not much difference. So probably we shouldn't pay much uh, too attention to these uh, two variables. Okay, and then now with this survival curve. And then here's a prediction. And prediction is the first time and it's kind of like a, uh, confusing what we are looking at here. Well, what we're looking at is like from zero to one, so clear activity log. One meaning that they use this uh, feature. Zero means they didn't. And the difference is if you didn't, then the predictions, this is like, uh, um, it says hazard ratio 1.5, Eight. Wait a second. Uh, uh, okay. So this one is um. Then okay. So how that ratio? Uh, okay. 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 Sorry. Uh, so this cancel the the bottom number. So zero point four seven six zero. So that's the important number here. So the the chance of canceling for uh, the users who didn't use this uh, feature is 47%. And then the users who use this feature is 63%. So it's much higher. And we know that because we saw the uh, survival curve by this time. However, this one gives you the snapshot of, you know, uh, what's the, um, what makes a difference, uh, how much this feature makes a difference. But what do you mean is like, you know, at the beginning I said, this churn rate is tricky. So you can't have like just two numbers and compare and then say like which one is better or something like that because we have to compare with the curve, right? So I'm contradicting myself. So, but when you look at here, the period for prediction is set to three months. And this is actually the period of, uh, I think the medium value of, you know, among all the users. So three months meaning is around here. So this is a time three. Okay, and then, so this one survival rate is 0 0.52 and then here survival rate uh, 0 0.36. And basically think of it, it's sort of like you have the sausage or whatever the things and then like you cut it, slice. And basically we are looking at maybe like a cake or something and then like you just cut it. And we are look, you're looking at the sort of like a slice, the surface of the slice. And that is the predictions. Um, I'm not sure like I'm explaining uh, well. <clears throat> I created some slides here. Okay. So what we are what we are looking at under the prediction tab is something like this. Okay. And then the right hand side, the survival curve is about the survival rate or retention rate. But then left hand side, the chart you see under the prediction tab is actually the cancel rate or churn rate. So it's a it's a different uh it's a kind of opposite side of numbers. But basically you're looking at the uh, same information except left hand side is focusing on a particular period in this case a third month okay so it you can change it let's say hey you know what like i want to know the first month that's what we want to know then you can actually change it by typing one or something then if you click on the apply button and then this uh, uh, result will change but how it's going to change well the uh, it's going to use this first month's numbers. 
Okay, so so it really in that way you can actually sort of predict, you know, like what's that uh, sort of the survival rate or churn rate. Okay, <clears throat> so there's that, and then now let's look at the coefficient. And this is the tricky part of this whole survival, uh, especially Cox regression model. We, because this Cox regression model is a statistical model, it's behind the scene, the model itself is actually the formula. It's like a kind of mathematical formula. So, and it's, it's, it, it comes with some baggage, which is uh, cons, constraints. I'm gonna explain that uh, quickly. But what I want you guys to know is first, sort of like, a, intuitive understanding first before getting too much detail. Um, so here, this is what we are looking at. So let's focus on left-hand side, the clear activity log. So it's, it has a blue color. So blue color indicates the chance of charm, or in this case, canceling, is more likely. Right, that users who clear their activity logs are more likely to chance. So like when you see blue, it's actually, in this case, that because event is a cancel. So like it's more likely to happen, right? So it can be tricky because you we, we are trained to see like red is bad in a way. It's a red is sort of like alarming, but it's actually here, it's opposite. The blue is the indication of, hey, you know, these types of customers tend to charm. So now let's, uh, if we um, if we look at these red colors in the timeline post like, and then receive friend requests, these are less likely for that event to occur, meaning like uh, the churn to occur. So there, any, I mean, not any, but the customers use these, these features tend to not charm, okay? So that's, it seems like, okay, so these are the kind of useful features to retain the customers. So now in the, at the middle, we have three variable with gray color. So that is first is a gray color. So therefore it's not significant. So that means they probably might have some impact, but it's very sort of like a minimum or negligible, <clears throat> or we can't conclude there is a significant difference that these variables make on the survival curve. And in this case, when you look at this um, um, confidence interval, uh, that's the kind of vertical line, and it's crossing that one, right? Like I draw as a red line. And that is actually, the y-axis is something called hazard ratio. So hazard ratio, or like a, forget about the hazard, it's just a ratio, one, meaning it can be more, it can be less, so we don't know. That's the kind of 50, 50% line, that's the one here. So therefore, any variable crossing that line is actually gray, happen to be the p-value is greater than 0 0.05 or 5%. Okay, so now elephant in the room, right? So that's a hazard. What is a hazard? We, I, we, I said, I uh, mentioned a couple of times. So a chance of observing an event, in this case, a council occurring uh, by the end of a given time, in this case, a month or you know, each month period. So let's say like what uh, we have the two survival curve for one for Mac, one for Windows, and then the hazard for Mac users for the first third month is 5%. Okay, so that means from the second month to third month, end of the third month, right? So like 5%, uh, the change in terms of the survival rate. So this is called hazard. This is not the ratio, this is hazard. And for the Windows users, 5.5%, uh, right? So the same period we calculated in the 5.5%. And then the hazard ratio for Windows uh, compared to Mac, is that like then you want to calculate you know 5.5 percent divided by 5 percent, which is 1.1. So compared to Mac, like it's the hazard ratio is like 1.1 or 1.1 times the more likely the Windows users tend to churn compared to Mac users, and that's what uh, this hazard ratio. Um, <clears throat> so that means the hazard ratio is greater than one then the chance of churn is more likely, right? So now if let's flip it. Uh, if we said like, what's the hazard ratio of Mac users, then we need to compare to the Windows hazard. So then you divide 5% by 5.5%, which is 0 0.91. So that means 0 .9, uh, 0 0.91 times um, the Mac users tend to 
char. However, the, this number is hazard ratio is less than one. That means the chance of char is actually less likely. So this hazard ratio is uh, plays an important role in this Cox regression. Here is a formula. Uh, you don't have to uh, remember it myself. I don't, actually don't remember until like I flip the page like this. Um, but key here is this is the uh, numeric formula that I was talking about behind the Cox regression. And then the, therefore, when you have the formula, there's always some uh, kind of constraint. So this hazard ratio has uh, is assumed as being constant. And then this model, it finds the most optimal uh, hazard ratio for a given set of predictor variables, in this case, the product features, to fit the actual survival curve that you know, we could um, draw the survival curve with a couple of Meyer um, algorithm. OK, so, <clears throat> so then what do you mean by hazard ratio being consist, uh, constant? So we know that like a hazard ratio is, in this case, Windows hazard ratio is 1.1, 1 .1, right? Like compared to Mac window, uh, Mac hazard. So that's 1.1. 1 .1. And what do you mean this hazard ratio is constant? If it's constant, these two curves never cross. Instead, it becomes something like this. So any given period, it's always 1.1. 1 .1. Any given period that we're giving me a calculated hazard and then um, calculate the ratio between those, it's always 1.1, 1 .1, meaning those two lines sort of like it's almost like a kind of going parallel. So that's the constraint we have with Cox regression model. And of course, it never, the, the real actual data never be look like this. However, that's the sort of like uh, the pattern that this Cox regression model tried to capture from the data. Okay, and then that, therefore, when you go to the survival curves tab, and then all the lines looks like um, uh, kind of you know the never cross that all the never um, change, and then the ratio is uh, uh, constant. So it's sort of like um, almost like impossible, really, like you know, uh, align together. Okay, and then. Okay, so that's the uh, kind of like overall uh, high level understanding of the Cox regression model. And then, so I like to actually skip this part. Um, uh, you can take a look at it. I, I basically created a slide. Hey, uh, I, I'm going to just introduce what I'm having this slide. So let's say that we, we oh, by, by this point, we know. Sorry, going back and forth here. So by this point, we know that timeline post like and receive uh, friend requests, those two product features help to uh, retain more customers. That If that's the case, what if like uh, the customers who actually use those both features and then will that make even better or not much difference? It's just one of them or just having two is different. So that's something that you can actually do data wrangling to create a new column, combining those two columns, um, and then using a survival curve to analyze further as well. So one of the detailed steps you can find in the slides. And for this seminar, though, I'm going to skip into the next chapter. OK, so here is a <clears throat> survival random forest. So look at the Cox regression model, which actually is a statistical model, but this one is more like machine learning model. So the random forest is uh, consists of the bunch of three, in this case, the decision tree. And decision tree is a series of folks with conditional questions. Um, uh, so for example, if the customer is greater than 40 years old or less than 40 years old, and then the customer's salary is less than this and that, and then going through this uh, series of conditions, then you get the result. Hey, this customer might uh, more likely churn at the 60% chance or something like that. Okay, so so that's a decision tree. But all you can use a decision tree to uh, predict the survival curve as well. And then random forest is basically uh, use, let's say like 20 trees. And then each tree ha has a sample data from the original data and then create a tree. And then like, you get the survival curve as a result. And then because when you do the sample data at the first and it's, um, each tree can look different. So therefore the result can be different. So they, then the, uh, the, the random forest produce the result as the average or as a majority vote. Um, so that's a random forest. But also, the survival random forest is basically apply the random forest for the survival data or to 
produce or to predict the survival curve itself. So this is like super um, uh, sort of like kind of high level overview of uh, survival model. But I like you to uh, realize this is a machine learning side of a survival model, not the statistical side of things. Okay, so let's this one too. Uh, you can actually uh, create the machine learning model quickly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy this. Uh, the and then I'm going to say, this is like a random forest. Okay. And then all I need to do is just change that model from the uh, uh, survival forest. So this one is not the random forest. It's actually a survival forest. Uh, so don't make a uh, mistake on this one. Uh, the survival forest is the one can actually be used for this kind of survival data with a period and then uh, event status. Okay. And then I'm going to just click on RAM bottom. And then you will see pretty much the same uh, result. So this is a prediction tab. You see that, and in this case, again, the third month. So like by the end of the third month, like what's the percentage of the cancellation rate? Uh, so that's what you can see. And then um, when you go to the important tab, you can see, okay, the spirit is pretty much the same. These are three uh, variables that have his, um, huge impact on the survival curves. Okay, what you don't, uh, and then, sorry, and then the survival curve here, and then this is how, you know, they uh, make the change. I want you to notice here though, clear activity log, or even like the receive friend request too, that curve pretty much the same. It's the one is above most of the time, but then at the end around here, those lines kind of close. And this is a difference between uh, that this uh, machine learning model can bring. So before here, um, oops, how I recall. So these two lines never cross. I mean, like it, it's always the same, right? It's like, um, but random forest, it can be different because the data uh, seems to be that way. <clears throat> so the machine learning is more flexible uh, because it doesn't have the constraint like Cox regression had. Cox regression constraint is like that odds ratio, not odds ratio, hazard ratio is constant. And there's no such con uh, constraint because this is not the mathematic formula. Um, therefore, it's more flexible. Okay, so to... Uh, to explain that difference a little bit uh, more, because this is the important part. So this one is I created with an operating system as a predictor. And then you see like Linux, Windows, and Mac uh, survival curve um, for the, this is a Cox regression model. And as you see, those three lines, each line for each OS, it's sort of like at the same kind of uh, pace that, you know, going dropping, uh, go, dropping down. But this is a survival forest, a random, for, sub, random survival forest. Then each line, sort of like, especially the green line in this case, is sort of like started slow, uh, dropping steeper, and then get much more delay, right? So <clears throat> here's another example. So left-hand side is a, this is a couple of mayor or a couple of mile or the survival cup. So this is actual data. It's just, you just did that sort of like summarization, aggregation of it. And then right-hand side is a, a survival, oh, oops, this one is not survival forest. This is actually a Cox regression. Oops, okay, here we go. So right-hand side, Cox regression model. And then again, those two lines are sort of like a kind of uh, parallel. Uh, throughout the whole period, right? Um, so if you think this is Cox regression is actually reflecting on the actuator, uh, you know, it obviously not after the certain period. However, at the first, you know, maybe like 20 months or something like that, it's very close, right? So it really, you know, I mean, it's statistical because of the constraint, it's not good at capturing the nonlinear pattern. However, still can find some patterns that you have in the, in the data. On the other hand, the survival force, left-hand side, again, like actual data, right-hand side, the survival force. And you know, this one seems to be the reflecting more of the uh, actual data because the right-hand side is a series of sort of think away like if-else uh, conditions. So it can be more um, uh, flexible to capture the nonlinear relationship. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so now then the survival model and the machine learning model, then which one should I use? I, I would recommend you use both and then understand the limit 
uh, limitation of each model. So first, the, for prediction, if you want to predict, then the machine learning models like random survival forests tend to perform better given the nature of being able to capture even the non-linear patterns, right? So uh, if you want to, wanted to you know, predict not just a third month or maybe like six, six months or 12 months, with the uh, example we saw, looks like the survival models tend to perform better because the statistical model like Cox regression can only capture linear patterns because of the constraint. However, the machine learning models can't be used to evaluate whether the given relationship is significant or not. You know, we saw that, for example, at birthday, was not significant. And even though it seems like it, ha it has some, uh, it makes a difference between the curves, but it's not significant. So that type of the statistical test is something that stati only statistical model can do, but a machine learning model is not even interested in. Another thing today uh, I didn't really mention is that the way to understand actually this Cox regression model is that, so, uh, Whatever the result we are looking at here is, so for example, uh, I think this is probably a better way. This is kind of a complicated way to explain for us. So clear activity logs hazard ratio is 1.5a, so therefore the more likely to occur. This number is actually based on the assumption that this at birthday start chart and all these uh, other variables value don't change. The, the thing I'm talking about here is sometimes what if like a clear activity log and a time, oh, I, th I think this is more easier. So timeline post like and then receive friend request, those two variables. What if those two variables are super correlated? So that means we don't know is that because timeline post like if the customers because use this, this feature, that's why they tend to retain or because same users probably using this feature then we don't know which one is the one that who's actually um, you know making that difference, right? So then that's that's where like this kind of statistical model can be very helpful because in order to understand this hazard ratio 0.75, it's actually here is assuming including receive a friend request and all other predictor variables, they have, their value is the same. That means we collect all the people who use that feature. And then when we change only this, and then if they are going to retain or cancel, right? Or the other way to think about it, um, this one too, is if the other variables stay, and either like a zero group or one group, and then like only this receive friend request change, and then each group, uh, when we look at it, and then it makes a difference in terms of the survival curve. So that kind of uh, idea or concept, a way of thinking helps you to sort of like evaluate your sort of like understand a causal relationship. So we are talking about coordination and causation here. Um, so that means um, statistical model help you to sort of like a, you know, test your co uh, causal relationship hypothesis. It's not going to give you the co complete result. However, it helps you to kind of like organize, you know, that relationship. Um, <clears throat> okay. But the machine learning side of uh, model is only interested in the correlation. And it doesn't care if the other variable is constant, uh, uh, constant or didn't change or that kind of stuff. If any, you know, even if those two variables are super correlated, but still, if it's useful for predicting that, you know, if this customer's uh, survival curve, then it will use it uh, without considering the underlying relationship. Okay, so, so that's the difference. Then, so let's kind of summarize here the significant check, the statistical test is uh, uh, only you can expect from the stats uh, learning model like Cox regression. And then not by nonlinear relationship, the, the stats learning model like Cox regression cannot capture. So the machine learning model is uh, good at capturing those relationship. And then the causation and correlation, there's some difference there. And then another thing is a categorical predictor. This time, like I use all the predictors and numericals, like 0 and 1. But if you happen to have, like let's say, like operating system or the country or something like that, that's a categorical. Then you, the way you understand hazard ratio is that you got to compare to the base level, which is the most frequent value in the exploratory. Uh, this case, we didn't have that, so I'm going to uh, 
cap, uh, skip this one, but there's a, a slight different way of understanding things. But however, um, the value here, so that only applied to this coefficient chart. That says random forest doesn't have a coefficient chart because it doesn't have such idea of the hazard ratio or something like that. So it doesn't really matter for the uh, survival forest, but for the Cox relation, uh, when you understand hazard ratio, if this one's categorical variable, then the, you need that the ratio compared to the uh, base level. <clears throat> okay. So the one more thing, uh, I think the time is uh, kind of pushing, so I'm gonna uh, just go through the slide, the prediction with survival model. So like now I think it's, uh, what I like really under, uh, emphasize is understanding the relationship in the data. So by this point, like I think we have enough insights and I think that's sort of like enough to even look further or look, start interviewing the customers and so on, but Hey, we looks like we got a nice model, and then like I like to predict, how, you know, what's the pass, uh, chance that this customer, um, you know, charm on the certain period? Then you can actually do that uh, prediction. So you create the uh, uh, prediction model here, either survival forest or a Cox regression, whatever, under the analytics view, right? Then you have the new data, or even the same data is fine, and then then you wanna. Um, <clears throat> this is a set of customers, and then like you like to understand, you know, based on what do they, uh, what they do with uh, you know product activity, uh, functionality, uh, features, then you want to predict if uh, you know all the customers, each customer's survival rate, right? So in that case, you can go to the plus button and then select predict with model uh, bracket analytics view, and then you get this dialog. And then you select the uh, data frame, which is usually the data that you are looking at. Oh, uh, uh, sorry, the data frame where like you created the uh, um, analytics model, uh, prediction model, and select the model. And then next one is important: the survival time. Like so, let's say which you know uh, you it can predict the survival rate. However, which period uh, you're talking about? Uh, is more uh, it's really important so you can say like 10 months or like three months or something like that then you get that result okay so that's it for today and the next seminar uh, is i like to switch gear so like we have sort of like kind of down for the cohort analysis and i want to move on to the different type of uh, data analysis and starting with rfm analysis for sales data any pe people uh, uh anybody as a customer like sort of sales data or order data i uh, can use this technique uh recent recency frequency and monetarily and then you actually create those score for each customer and then uh, you can analyze which customer you should contact or focus and so on okay so at the same time next week and then for future uh seminar and also past seminars recording you can find them after, under the online seminar page um, so please take a, a look at it as well. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, I'm gonna open up a question session if you guys have any. <clears throat>